life has been? Your life has been out of control. Out of control. You're confused. Seen and unseen. 
But God, we don't want to be downhearted when we give you praise. Yes, we want to magnify your name. Oh, yes, and God, we know that you can do all things because that's what your word said. And God, you are the lifter of our heads, God. And we thank you, God. We thank you as we, as, as we bring Christ Center before you, God, asking that you would just sit and enjoy our worship. Sit and just smell the aroma of our praise, God. And Lord, we give you glory. Yes, Father. And we give you praise, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because the song said that we are raging war. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
and we want to circle them. We pray for their understanding. We pray for their faith, Lord God, that their faith, not fear, fail them. Even though they walk through the street, even though they walk through times when people are shooting, Lord God, yes, that their faith knows that bullets will pass over them, yes, and God yes. will pass around them. That no plan will protect, that will protect the, that come against them, the strive, the steal, their joy will be accomplished in the name of Jesus. That when they see these children. They will say, touch not God's anointed. Yes. Because these are the anointed children of God, Lord God. Give us the mind. Give us the protection. Give us the sense of the urgency that we play on our children. That we tell them the story. That we're not afraid to hold on to them, Lord God, and tell them we love them. That we're not afraid to keep on blessing them, Lord God. Even though they may not be on our eyesight, they are never away from yes. you. We ask you to protect the child as she goes back to school, Lord God. We ask you to protect these children as they go back and forth to school, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you, you can continue to propel them into their destiny, yes. into your perfect will, Lord God. Yes. Because all you want is you to live, to live a peaceful life, yes. a joyful life, a life, Lord God, where they can give you praise. A life, Lord God, where they can say, my God has not failed or forsaken me. A a God that knows everything, Lord, that you have all the plans. Give them what they desire, Lord God. Put a smile in their heart and put praise on their lips. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Start heading from Club Club for Still for the use of it in the virtual living and the winning of others to Christ. Amen. 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 And now we will have our scripture reading. We want to ask that you would stand in reverence to God's word. And um, come on over, come on, baby. Um, but we're reading Psalms 91, verses 1 to 10. Uh, Michaela will be reading 1 to 5. And Mariah will be reading 6, 6 to 10. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the... Persilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror terror by terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing of the reading of this word. Amen. 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 Thanking God for the Holy Spirit that, that a lot of times you, you make a script and Sometimes you just can't follow it. Amen. But I didn't even say good morning. Good morning, Christ Center. How are you today? Good morning. Okay. Good morning. You didn't sound excited. You, you know, I know it's I know the, I know it's cloudy outside. I know it is. But when you come into this is God's house. And when you come into the house of the Lord, you're supposed to be excited, leaping and jumping. I, I mean, I can't leap and jump, <laughs> but, but, you, but you're excited. So we'll start all over again. Good morning, Christ Center. God, it is such a wonderful day to see each and every one of you. I am so happy, so excited. And you look marvelous, as my brother always says. And so you're supposed to say, and so do you. Uh, uh, so do you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. We will um, have a prayer request. If you have any prayer requests, I ask that you would um, give them to our usher and um, that she would bring them up here to us as we go into the, go in before the presence of the Lord to have prayer, and, and we will be led in prayer by our pastor, Elsa Johnson Davis. Oh. 
for Edmund. A song written by <coughs> Thomas Gill reminds us that this day is no surprise to God. Mm -hmm. Your situation is no prize, surprise to God. Before you lay your head down tonight, God has seen everything, every conversation, every circumstance, every longing, every heartache, every joy. He is there. He is God. And we want to worship a sovereign, yes. holy, yes. omnipotent, all-wise yes. God. Let's praise that God because we're coming to somebody who can do something about the situation we're in. No matter what it is, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, and we will go down into prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we love you. We adore you. We thank you because there's none like you. From the rising of the sun unto the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We may rejoice with tears meeting under our chin, but we will rejoice. We may be rejoicing, Lord, with bills piled up in our home, but we will rejoice, God. We may rejoice as we stand over the sick bed of a loved one, but we will rejoice because you are God, you are holy, you are righteous, and you never, ever made a mistake. There is no error in you. There is no error in your son, God. And Lord, as we travel through this veil of tears sometimes, you have sent us a comforter. You've told us we're troubled on every side, but we're not in distress. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but we are not destroyed. We are here for your glory. Everything we go through is for your glory, if we go through and you'll bring us through God. And so, Father, we petition you today on behalf of so many requests, Lord, those that uh, Sister Beverly has listed in our, in our um, bulletin, dear God, and we have some requests that have come to us this morning that before they were written, you knew. And even if we don't know them all, you do. And there's a prayer request in the Tripline family for the pregnancy and birth and de uh, delivery of, um, for Sister Tripline and Glass. Um, grandmother and great grandmother uh, for our, our sweetheart. Uh, tell me her name. Shavana. Shavana. She's going into um, as, for her pregnancy and birth, the safe birth and delivery of her her, her ba beautiful baby that you've given. Lord, there's a prayer request for Angie Grimble, and you know that as a, a as a member of the Stevens family, how precious she is. Lord, we pray that you attend to wherever those desires and needs are. Yolanda Boykin has submitted a, a prayer request from e, Emir Center as they go through the schools and families, Lord, the job that they do. Um, we want Emir to be out of business. Yes, yes. We want them to be out of the comfort business for yes. murderers, and we want them yes. to be in the restoration business. Yes. We want them to say, we don't have any more work because we haven't killed. Nobody else has been murdered in our yes. school. We don't have any work, but we have some restoration work to do, God. And we want them to flourish and to grow for that reason, Lord. The work we, we look up with um, Sister Yolanda all the time because she does a very difficult, necessary job talking to the families and the members who have, of the families who have lost loved ones through murder and tragedy, dear God. And so we continue to lift up so many other of our loved ones, our friends and family, God. We thank you for the prayers for the Johnson family, and we thank you for uh, just feeling our help, Lord. We continue to remember my brothers and sisters as we prepare to send our brother on where he already is, God, to your presence. And so we thank you, Lord, for, for your mercy and for the lifting of our heads and for the drying of our tears, God. We know that grief is a long-time thing, and God, we never say, I never say I know what you're going through, but I do say I know who will bring you through. Because we never know what people really are going through. We know what we went through. We know what it felt like, but we don't know what other people are going through. And so God, we know who will bring you through. We know who will be the lifter of your head. We know who will help you raise your head to walk in. And even then through tears, remember laughters and times, good memories, God. And so we don't know what you're going through, but we need to know what God 
who will bring you to. And so we want to be witnesses through all the time that we will continue to lift up all of our bereaved and families in our church here and all around, Lord, messages coming on my text this morning. Uh, we lost our father. We lost so, so many people are just in shock this morning because of loss. And again, we concur with the prayers about our children just going to school. Just going to school. And then those who were on the bus that were wounded as well, the adults, just going to work, just walking out the house for no reason but this evil wickedness that God says we can wage war against. And God wins. God wins. We rebuke. We, we ask God to rebuke every enemy, every gunfire, every person. Whatever it is, wickedness is quiet today. We come against it in the name of Jesus Christ by his blood protection over our children, not just those in this room, but those that walk up and down the street going to Wagner to and fro, God. Those that are in our neighborhoods, those that are across the street, the people that we don't get along with and their children, God, we pray for everybody, God. We pray for safety, God. And you've told us that even in Babylon, we can flourish. Even in Babylon. Because you told us later in Jeremiah that you know the plans you have for us, but we are to be salt and light. And God, you bring to us the same situation the world is in so that we can show the world how we react. Because we have an advocate and a high priest, and you petition on our behalf, dear God. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus. We don't take life for granted. We don't take getting home from here for granted. We don't take waking up in the morning for granted. Everything you give us is a gift. And we thank you, God. We want to be consistent Christians. We yes. want to be Christians yes. in season and out of season. We want to be Christians when nobody's watching. We want to be Christians when we don't feel like it. We want to be Christians when the weather is not real. We want to be Christians when the money is not there. We want to be Christians because we belong to you. And you will never leave us and you will never forsake us, dear God. But we continue to listen, uh, to pray for our children. We pray for our leadership here. We pray for our pastor and our first lady, dear God. We thank you for these five decades, over half a century of labor and ministry, Lord, and that you reaped a bounty of a harvest for on behalf of what Pastor and Sister Stevens have planted here, and you've given more fruit and more fruit, and we thank you for that, Lord. We pray for the leadership here, Lord. We pray for all pastors and for our deacons and for our auxiliary leaders and for our young people, God. We pray for those that are coming behind us to take take us to that next level that you have, God. Lord, we don't want to block their path. We want to stand by. And Lord, when we can't run with them, we'll walk with them. When we can't walk with them, we'll wave at them. And when we can't wave, we'll stand on the side of the road and we'll cheer them on, God. Yes. Because our days are coming to a close. Yes. Our time is coming to an end. But Lord, you raised up. You raised up a remnant in this church who are leaders who are preachers, who are teachers, and who will do what we can't even imagine. Whatever we've done in these days that we've been here, those are the older ones, but guess what? We will be, it will be marvelous in our eyes. Mm. It will be marvelous in our eyes. If we look over heaven's gate, if we are allowed to do that, to see Christ's center is still on fire. There's still salt. There's still light. There's still saving souls. There's still winning for the kingdom of God. More than we can dream. More than we can see more than we can ask. And so God, I bless you already. I thank you for the increase. I thank you for the protection. I thank you for those that have come today, Lord, looking around. Lord, everybody we need, everybody we see in this, not see in the seats, that doesn't mean that these pews aren't filled. I see hundreds. I see many. I see many walking into this building saying, what must I do to be saved? I see it, God. And you will reveal it in due time, but we must be steadfast, unmovable, always always bound about in our dedication. Lord, when we give our word, let's keep our word. Let us be those people that can be trusted to carry the message of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Lord, we thank you for the promise. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for being our general in this war. And we'll never stop fighting. Yes. We'll never stop fighting. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's pray for like you believe in something. Yes. Now it's time for our children to return. And our, our youth will come up. And we'll be led into who's going to do the. Okay.
Uh, we're going to have our youth and children, and then uh, uh, Dr. David Owens is going to do the affirmation and prayer. I don't think there's too much prayer. I think we can pray. We can just pray. If we didn't do another thing, we'd just pray for the next two hours. It wouldn't be enough. So keep on praying over these children, Dr. Okay, children, you can come up now for the affirmation. Children too. Yes. Is that correct? 
Sister Coco, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. I'm gonna pray a word over them too. Uh, he, he's always on my heart. But um, so whenever so you got that, I'm gonna pass the mic to you. So you're gonna have a certain portion you gotta read. You ready? So go ahead and read collectively now. To ask you, we don't live here anymore. With God's help, our future is being created. We are new in Christ. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Luke 2 52. Knowing is not enough, I must apply. Wishing is not enough, I must do. Why? Because I'm a brilliant, imaginative child created in favor by God for greatness. I am capable, I am strong, I believe in God. I believe He will turn my dreams into a plan and my plan into reality. Today and every day I will attract success, abundance, and well being through Christ Jesus. Only good things will flow into my mind and life. I'm learning I can't fix problems until I allow Christ to fix my thinking. I am brave, fearless, bold, and strong. My life overflows with opportunity and blessings. I will be the best I can be with the help of God.
Yeah. It was to us that God revealed these things by the Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. I bring Sister Copley's grandchildren, great-grandchildren before you, Lord God. And the word I say to them, Lord God, is you knew them when they were in their mother's womb. Yes. And you had a plan for them. I pray for those plans right now in the name of Jesus. And no plan, no hurt, no harm will come to those plans as they are being carried out. That your will will be done in their lives, Lord God. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, because what Paul says that he won this race that you have given him. Father, allow her to run the race that you have given her, Lord God. Allow her life to be poured out as a drink offering, Lord God. But she knows that she is blessed and she can wear her crown. Her crown of victory when she gets to heaven, Lord God. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, I pray. The word in him is grace and love. That every time that he comes into the room, grace and love enters the room. People know that there's a living Christ available, Lord God, who's ready to forgive, who's ready to love, who's ready to bring a word to them, Lord God, that will bring them joy in this time in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, with Stephen. And Stephen was being stoned, Lord God. He looked into the heavens and he saw Jesus standing. I pray that she will forever be able to see Jesus standing. Yes. Jesus in action, that his works be of good. And when she sees that, Lord God, she sees him working in her life. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord God, for this woman, Lord God. This woman, this I give, I pray, I see Mary, who said, Be it unto me according to your will. Allow her life to so shine that people see that it's according to your will that she's blessed. According to your will that she's available. That we know that she will prosper and she will have a joy in the Lord. So be her strength, Lord God. Father, this child, Lord God, I, I pray for the Christ. The, in the sight of evangelist John that he saw into the throne room yes. of grace yes. that she would be able to see things that nobody can see that she would be able to see things that nobody ever thought of Lord God that she would be only brought to the court that she would be able to do the work in her life Lord God that people look upon her and they don't say what she doesn't have but if she says what she has Lord God I pray to you Lord I pray to you to work with your presence To bless the Lord for such a time as this. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank There's something you, you, you can tell about people. That's, you know, I, I watch people and I look at people. And I watch this man. This man is a few words. That doesn't mean he's not going to preach for an hour, but he's a few words. 
and his, first, his words are succinct. He yeah. tells you the truth. He tells you what he thinks. You know, you know we, there was a term that you older people may understand. You younger people don't even know what it's called. But there was a term that a governor of Alabama, George Wallace, used to talk about pussyfooting. Mm -hmm. He doesn't pussyfoot. He just comes right at you directly. He tells you what you should know. Hear ye him the words of my brother. Matter of fact, when you stand up and, 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 uh, and applaud him today, salute him so he feels comfortable. <laughs> Except for his wife. Just tell him what he ought to be doing. <laughs> she is your commander. <laughs> but uh, I want you to hear the words of our precious reverend, Brian K. Boy Ken. <laughs> After this next election. Okay. I'm taking this place to death. Uh, oh, Lord. <laughs>
may be seated. Can you hear me well? Yes. That's good. That's good news. I'm good to hear. I'm glad to hear. Well, here we are again at Christ Center Church of God. And we've all heard the news. I know I'm, I'm not going to harp on that too much, but we've heard the news. Once again, another one of our own has left and some more have been hurt because of something or whatever has touched someone in a certain way that feel like it had to be vengeance or vindication. It easily could have been squashed just with some understanding. But in our world today, we understand there's only one way or there's a main way to take care of problems and that is to take out the problem. But you see, he, the ruler of this world, is sitting back and smiling. But I want you to understand this. It's only for a moment. That's right. That's it's right. only for a moment. Yes. Because his time is short. Mm. I think I said that last week. Mm -hmm. His time is short and he knows it. The one, he wants to take everyone he can with him. But you see, we are people of God. And we have been given kingdom responsibility that in this world where there is bad news, we have the good news. And we preach that good news. I'm not preaching right now. But when we go out into the world, into the streets, into the schools, into our workplaces, that's when preaching becomes preaching. Amen. Because that's when we say, this is what I believe in. And I am convicted by it. Therefore, I preach nothing but glad tidings to you. You may not accept it. I'm not going to force it on you. A lot of people say we like to force our religion on them. We're not forcing anything. You have a choice. God has given us all a choice. All I can do is present the evidence to you. And you take whatever you want from it. And I can only present to you the word of God. Yes. Not my word. Not the president's word. Not anyone who's running for president. Mm -hmm. Not their word. Because we all know they fail. Amen. Only our God. He doesn't fail. And he still hasn't failed. Yes. Amen. Okay, something I forgot to mention before I get to the sermon. Um, I thank God for giving me this opportunity, especially for this month. Because if you didn't know, March is, we get the name March from this, this month because in ancient time, this is when men used to march off into battle. So you've been hearing all these songs about battles and victory and things like that. This is our month right now. Let us now raise a standard, raise the banner. And say, I am in this fight. And this fight is going to be a fight that has never been seen before. Let us now take this month and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 It pains me to see our brothers and sisters in Christ throw down their flags, their banners. Mm. And say, I give up. Mm. I give in. I can't do anymore. This is too much for me. Well, you know, I'm not giving up mine. I'm not throwing mine down. I'm going to hold it up. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you understand what a standard is? A standard is a flag that we place and we say, I am under this flag. And I am represented. Jesus said it himself that if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. So when we raise our banners, we lift up Jesus, who died on the cross for us, gave up his life, suffered and died. But you know what? You know what, Sister Bass? You know after three days he rose again? Yes, he did. All power. All power in his hands. And he gave us that one command. Yes. Two things he said. I love it. He said, go and make disciples. Go, go, go. Go as you go, make disciples. And in Acts 1.8, he said it like this. 
He says, uh, now, now I'm drawing a blank. Senior, um, senior moment. No, it's not a senior, it's a junior moment. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yes. happen that often. <laughs> here it is, here it is. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be witnessing unto me in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and all those places, and through the uttermost parts of this world. Mm -hmm. Witnesses. But you see, it's one thing to receive power. But there must be a covenant relationship first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it himself. Or we just listen. He said, look. Do we not cast out demons in your name? Do we not do work all these great works? Depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Because you never had a relationship with me. So if we are to fight this battle today, let us first come under a covenant relationship with our Lord. You abide in me and I abide in you. You will bear good fruit. Amen. Amen. Now we can get into the sermon. Praise God. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to two places today. Ruth chapter 3 and Mark chapter 5. We're going to start off with Ruth chapter 3 first. Ruth chapter 3 and Mark chapter 5. We're going to start with Ruth chapter 3. We all know Ruth. She is a Moabitess. She followed her mother-in-law back into Israel. She said, your God is my God now, and I will worship him. But then something happens, well, something even before that. And she has this thing where the mother-in-law says, look, go home, get yourself cleaned up, Put on your lippage and go out there to the field and you go to that man. And then there's, a, there's another woman. There are two women. Two women I'm going to talk about today. One in the Old Testament is Ruth and the second one's in the New Testament. They both have something in common. It's Ruth and the woman with the issue of blood. You do know they have something in common. Matter of fact, they have more than one thing in common. I'm going to bring that out today. So I'm going to read the first text, okay? Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 true 11. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now, Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best, I mean your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies. And you shall go in, uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. And she said to her, All that you say to me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother in law instructed her. And after Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was cheerful, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself. And there was a wo and there a woman was lying at his feet, and he said, "Who are you?" So she answered, "I am Ruth, your maid servant. Take your maid servant under your wing, for you are a close relative." Then he said, "Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, and that you did not go after young men." whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request, for all the people of my town know that you are of moral integrity. They know that you are of excellence. But they know that you are a virtuous woman. 
Who can find a virtuous woman? I think you just did. Yes. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. We're going to come back to this. Now a certain woman had a, fl had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Let us pray. Most glorious and gracious and heavenly Father, before you we come today, glorifying you and magnifying your great and wonderful name. What other name is there that can heal us? What other name is there that can save us? Who is there that can take these things from us? and give us all that we need. We do not call upon any name but your name alone. Whether it be sickness, whether it be emptiness, whether it be loneliness, our eyes are fixed on you. For we know because of your loving kindness and your, and your, your loving kindness and your tender mercies, you will do all these things for us. So we thank you now and we thank you in advance because we know that you are the one and only true God, and as the scriptures say, the high, the God on high, mighty God, who was ahead of us, who was on top of us, but at the same time you are with us. Never leaving us, never forsaking us, always there with us. So because of the scripture, I pray for those who are sick in their bodies and in their minds, and those who have a hole in their hearts, may it be filled with your goodness and your graciousness. And may we go to the highways and byways and speak of your goodness and your graciousness, not of our own doing, but only of yours. So now we thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. 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 Now if I said this, who do you think is, or what do you think is, the nastiest bird out there. You know, the one that just can't be beaten. The one who just doesn't care. Who doesn't, who doesn't really... Whatever. You want to come up against me? You got a problem. You're probably thinking evil. Not really. Not really? Okay. What about a hawk? A vulture? Buzzards? Yeah. A crow? Okay. Wild turkey, yeah, that was going to be uh, the 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 national bird, yeah, the wild turkey, yes, that was proposed to be our national bird for America. What if I told you that the meanest, nastiest, roughest, toughest bird out there can't even fly great, can't even fly well? What if I told you the rooster was a bad little bird? Have you ever seen roosters? Yeah. Yeah. Like, my goodness, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Hawks will come in and they will go right after a hawk. I watched a video, he, this rooster had a hawk pinned down. Pinned him down. Started pecking and scratching him. The rooster walked away. The hawk didn't. Mm -hmm. I watched the video. Three turkeys came up against the rooster. Guess who didn't shy away? That rooster went to battle. Wow. Peacock. You think a peacock? A big old peacock? No. Nope. That rooster, those feathers came up, and he went on the attack. The biggest, baddest bird out there is the rooster. But think about it. Think about roosters. What are they good for? They got the hens. They're good for protection. 
They will protect that hen even to the death. Not only that, because of roosters in in the in the I don't know in whatever you call it. I'm not a farmer. I don't know what it is. But that whole collection of the the hens and the chickens, they keep order. If there's a fight that's going to break out between the hens, guess who steps in? It's that rooster. The rooster is the one who sets the pecking order. If a hawk or an owl, or whatever comes in, they raise their arm. Watchmen, it's the, the, the rooster that raises the alarm when there is danger coming. Okay. All right. They set the tone on that farm, on that chicken coop or whatever you call it. They will defend the flock. They keep the peace. Like I said, if there's something happening, the rooster will step in and stop all of that. They bring calm and cohesiveness to that group. Not only that, do you know what they will do also? They will stop chicks and chickens from eating the wrong types of insects. And they will eat it themselves. But will make sure they know which one's the right ones for them to eat. These are roosters, the biggest, baddest bird <laughs> known to man. Now we have just read in our scripture two ladies. They know who is the biggest and the baddest. They know who it is that will set things in order. They know who is their kinsman redeemer. They know there is only but one who can save them. There is only one that can watch over them. And there is only one who can take them under their wings. I'm going to explain that here real soon. So I titled this message, and it's a simple one. I usually come up with something that's unbelievable or whatever. But this is a simple one, under his wings. That's it, just under his wings. That's it, just under his wings. Now we've read these two passages, and there are some similarities between Ruth and the woman with the issue of blood. Notice this, they were both called daughter, okay? Now that doesn't mean that they were born of, that Ruth was born from Boaz or, or the woman of Israel and blood was born from Jesus. No. That word daughter, understand this, when it called daughter, that means there is a relationship there. Yes. Okay, there's a relationship. We all heard it before. Daughters of the church. Daughters of the city. There's a relationship both of them had something in common because they were considered in a relationship right. at that point. Mm -hmm. So they were daughters. Oh, I also forgot to mention that um, I'm giving this sermon to you, and this is Women's History Month. Yes. Okay? Yes. Amen. And uh, I, I love it because these two women set the tone for us, and they are teaching us what we need to know when it comes to the one who will protect us. Right, amen. amen. Not only that, their requests were accepted. Right. Cover me under your wings. Mm -hmm. Heal me. Mm -hmm. right. Heal me. Yeah. Cover me under your wings. Protect me. Ruth was saying, marry me. Boaz says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. I will marry you. The woman with the issue of blood said, heal me. What did Jesus say? Okay. 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 Your faith has healed you. Let's translate this more. Your faith has saved you. Okay? Your faith has saved you. They were daughters. They, they made a request and the requests were accepted. And there was another thing they did. And I think I already told you that. We need to understand this. This is what these, these two ladies taught us. That victory by faith comes only in the kinsman redeemer himself. Not the young or the old, the rich or poor, and no physician exclusively can heal us. 
can heal us. Um, heal. Healthy. You know, these have come from the same root. Being healed and being healthy, uh, we, we like to say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fit and I'm all these things. But having that good health means a lot more. That means there is peace of mind. Yes. That means that uh, yeah. that there is there is safety and there is security there. Mm -hmm. That means that my inner person is feeling well as as much as my outer person. True. My spirit, my spirit is also well. Come under his wings. Ruth said, cover me in your under your wings. And we all know what that looks like. A mother bird, a rooster, will do something like this. And whatever is trying to fall upon you won't make it. It won't make it because of the protection. Because of that place of refuge, because of that safety, because of that security, security, secure. The absence of fear. The absence of fear. But you see, there is, they told us, this only comes when we place our faith, when our victory is only in the kinsman redeemer. No young, no old, no physician exclusively can heal us except for the kids and the Redeemer. Let me tell you the story. There's a a lady, she she runs a an establishment, I guess, for women that are coming out of jail that were incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Well, one day, she told the pastor, you know, my, my ladies here, they tell me that they see spirits at night. There are evil spirits in this house. And the evil spirit, I had one of the mothers came in and she shook a rattle or some other lady. This was a church lady, un unbelievably. And she did some things. And, and the ladies here, they still are under this when they see these, these spirits. You know what the pastor said? This is what he said. You displace those evil spirits with the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. I said, you let the Holy Spirit in, those evil spirits will be displaced. Mm -hmm. You see, there is no method. There is no way. There is nothing that we can do to be saved. Mm -hmm. Victory is not in anything that we do. That's, that's true. That's the problem. We keep looking for methods and ways to save ourselves. Mm. These words that keep coming out is, I know Jesus can do this. I know God can do this. But. But. But I must go and do for myself. But I must go and do this. But I must go and do that. These two ladies here told us clearly that victory is by faith in faith of the kinsman redeemer himself. Is Jesus a kinsman redeemer? Yes, yes he is a kinsman yes. redeemer. He is the yes. firstborn of yes. many brethren. Yes. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Yes. He is the one even greater than Boaz himself. Mm -hmm. Greater than Boaz. What is a kinsman redeemer? What do they do? This is how I wrote it. The kinsman redeemer bears a responsibility on behalf of the relative who is in trouble, who is in a desperate need, and who is in danger. You see what the kinsman redeemer does? And this is what Boaz did. He pays, listen now, listen carefully. He pays the price that none of us can pay. Amen. He buys back what we have lost. The kinsman redeemer, the next of kin, takes it upon himself to pay the debt that we have rung up. Did Jesus do that same thing? Yes. I think he did do that same thing. He told a woman with the issue of blood, when a woman with the issue of blood came to him and said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment and I will be healed. What was this garment that Jesus was wearing? Well, I'm wearing it right now. This is called a prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what this does. At the end of these tassels, you see these tass this tassel here. There are five knots. And then these strands here 
are eight. Five and eight are what? Thirteen. Okay. This whole tassel all together is called the tzitzit. Tzitzit. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. But the numerical value of this is 600. So therefore, Jesus was wearing this garment. It represents the 613 laws that were passed in the Old Testament. She knew that he was the only one who, who kept these laws perfectly. Jesus was the only one who kept these laws perfectly. Now we call it a towel, a, a tassel, a, the hem of his garment, a zitzit. Do you know what else this is called? It's translated as a wing. This is also a wing. She touched the hem of his garment and she formed a relationship with the one who kept all the laws perfectly. This is why Jesus called her daughter. Because he, she formed a relationship with him. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has saved you. She knew because in Malachi chapter 4, this was prophecy. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stolen. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that, that will leave them neither root nor branch. Listen. But to you who fear my name, the S-U-N, Son of Righteousness, shall arise with healing in his wings. Yes. With healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. I must believe it. <laughs> you shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this. Says the Lord of hosts, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in horror for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. You see, we also need to remember one thing about the kinsman redeemer. There's more to them. <coughs> Excuse me. He's also called the avenger of blood. The kinsman redeemer is also called the avenger of blood. <coughs> Excuse me. When there was a family member that was murdered unlawfully, the kinsman redeemer, the avenger of blood, by law, can seek out that murderer and kill that person. Now I'm going to ask you this question. Did Jesus do that? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know how? Because the thief comes to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Jesus is our avenger of blood. Amen. On the cross, Jesus suffered and died to heal us from our physical and moral decay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus shed his blood for us. Not only did he do that, he suffered and died so that we could be closer to God once again, to be reconciled unto him. Amen. Jesus suffered and died to disarm the principalities and powers of this world. Yes. And you know what's great, you know what else the greatest thing Jesus did? We talk about Redeemer, kids and Redeemer, redemption, and things like that. Jesus suffered and died to be a ransom for many. Yes. Yes. For I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. Jesus suffered and died on the cross because he bore all of our sickness, our weakness, and everything. 
Yes. All of these things. Yes. Because it is written in the word that Jesus does this. He has borne all these things. Now, redemption. Who's getting paid? Is it Satan getting paid? Did he have to pay back Satan for this? No. It was right back to God the Father. On the cross, Jesus said these words. It is finished. <clears throat> to tell us die. Debt is paid. Paid in full. Satan now, who is the, the murderer of the people, has been dealt a decisive blow. Yes. Has been dealt a decisive blow. No longer can he accuse the brethren and think he can get away with it. Because now he knows Jesus has come forth after three days, rose again. You know where he is right now? He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And what is so great about that, we who believe in him, we who have come under his wings, we who believe that he has kept the laws perfectly, we are seated with him. These ladies told us, you want victory? Come under his wings. Amen. Yes. Have faith in him. Come under his wings. Let him cover you. Let Jesus cover you. Boaz covered Ruth. Yes, yes. But he could not save everyone. Jesus, on the other hand, by the shedding of his blood, by suffering and dying for us, he has made himself a ransom for many. Can any of us say that of ourselves? It is a great thing to know that there was someone who died for our sins. Because we all know if it wasn't for that, if not for that, we would be dead right now. That we would not be able to make it in this world. That we will look just like the world. I, it kills me. I shouldn't say that. It, it, it really gets me when I hear our brothers and sisters of humanity who says, oh, we're just a mistake. We came out of nothing. We just some some ooh, some mud you just so happened. We were formed just from that. But you see what they're saying, right? That our lives are worthless. There is no use to us. There is no use for us. What is the what is the sense of us even living this life? Because all we know we're going to die and that's going to be it. We really don't have any purpose in this world. Again, Jesus said it himself. Go and make disciples. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Show them. Teach them. Let them know what victory looks like. Mm -hmm. There is no method. There is no nothing. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. Amen. Jesus is the way. Jesus is he the is way. the only yes, way. Yes, yes. We take it upon ourselves to try to find different things to help, to help us heal. To help save us. I listen to a pastor, and honestly, people, you gotta pray for me, because if I could have reached through, through the television, I was gonna slap him. Oh my god. I really was gonna slap him. He said, I am a pastor, a God-fearing pastor, and then he said these words that really make me cringe. It is my job. He said, It is my job. I couldn't get I, I I couldn't get up fast enough and I had to hold myself back because he was about to get back slapped. He said, it is my job. This is a pastor. He said, this is, it is my job to put a God-fearing man in the seat. He's talking about president. To put a God-fearing man be president. And you all know who he wants as president. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You all know who he wanted as president. I'm a God-fearing man. It is my job to put a, a, a God-fearing... I'm a pastor. It's my job to put a God-fearing man in the seat, in the president's seat. No, that's not your job. Matter of fact, you don't have a job. You don't have a job. You have a job? You're, sorry. You're expecting something in return? That's a job. But you see, because of the goodness and graciousness of God... We have a responsibility yes. 
because we respond to that to that goodness and graciousness and in response we preach the good news to the masses we tell them victory is not on your own that this fight whatever this fight is you will fail in this fight you will not make it in this battle it is going to kill you but let me tell you about eternal life let me tell you about the one that was sent by the Father, God. That in Him, if we believe in Him, we will have eternal life. See, God did not give us a method for victory. He gave us His Son. Yes, He did. He did not give us uh, some, some steps to take in order to be saved. He gave us His Son. He did not tell us, run around this building seven times and you will be healed. But, however, we fall at the feet of Jesus himself asking the same questions. What can I do to be saved? Believe on me and you will be saved. Believe in me and you will be saved. Call upon my name and you will be saved. How do I achieve victory? What can I do to win this battle? All you have to do is fall on your knees. Fall on your knees and believe in me. There is no victory ever won apart from Jesus himself. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. These ladies knew. They tasted it. From Boaz Ruth saw his loving kindness and his tender mercies from Boaz. The woman with the issue of the blood, it was no different. Who touched me? Well, Jesus, didn't you? You got all these people around you. Didn't you? You didn't know who touched you? Yeah, but who touched him in faith? Okay? Who touched him in faith? If I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch the wings of his garment. If I could just touch the 613 laws that are born in him where he kept perfectly, I will be healed. I will be healed. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Daughter, your faith has saved you. Not faith in yourself, but faith in me. In Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Who bore all of our sins on the cross. Who bore all of our infirmities. Our weaknesses. And he took it with him. And he struck down all principalities and powers. By the shedding of his blood. And by shedding his blood. He was a ransom. A ransom for many. So we're talking redemption here. The kingsman redeemer. This is all about redemption. That's what in the Bible, Redeemer, you'll see it. When it's translated, it says, okay, rescuer, deliverer, avenger. Now, I'm not talking about that, what we see in the movies these days. The avenger of blood. Okay, you have murdered my people. I am now coming out for you. That was done on the cross because Satan's power was eliminated on that day. And three days later, Hallelujah. victory. Yes. Victory. Amen. Victory. Amen. Three days later, Amen. victory. Amen. Victorious on that third day. Yes. Yes. So my question to everyone here, and I, I, I thank God for this month that I have this month to preach. Because I, it was just pressed upon me. We need to talk about fighting this spiritual war, this spiritual yes. battle. Yes. We really do. We really need to talk about spiritual battle. And you know, when we talk spiritual battle, what's the first thing that comes come to mind? Put on the whole armor of God. But I'm not going through that this month. I'm going to talk about the blood. Yes. The blood. Amen. When I see the blood, it is the blood of Jesus, the blood covenant 
that has reconciled us back to God again. And we can also say, like in Psalm 20, I believe it's Psalm 20, we rejoice in your salvation. In other words, we triumph in your victory. And I ask everyone, please, come under the wing of your Redeemer. Let him rescue you. Let him deliver you. Let him avenge you. If there is one here today right now who feels like I have done so much to try to heal myself, save myself, rescue myself, and I have failed at every moment, every time, I'm a, I ask you to please come forward. And we will pray for you right now. If you feel like I can't do this on my own or there's got to be another way, a better way, let me pray for you and the way will show you. If you feel that the only person that can save you is the one who's going to be placed in that seat come, was it, January next year? If you really believe that, you definitely need to come up here right now. Because no president, no congress, no city council, no mayor, none of them, none can even come close to saving us. None of them. We do not find victory in them because there is no victory in them. They like to come out during this time quoting Bible verses. They love to do it. But as soon as they get in office, they start passing laws, they come against us. Or they go into a restaurant and eat fried chicken with black people. <laughs> Where were you all this time? They like to say, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Well, if you're not on the Lord's side, you ain't saved. And you're not victorious. Amen. 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 So, run along. And I'll pray for you. There's no one here? No one? Well, let me do this, okay? First, put this up. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Something I was taught early on, and uh, a pastor at that time said, Brian, you know what you do? Open up the book of Psalms. Pray that song. I said, pray that song. Because I was saying, you know, I'm having, I'm having a hard time. I can't pray like everybody else. Everyone sounds so great. He said, open up the book of Psalm and start praying that song. And he showed me how to do it. So we read what? What song did we read? 91. There you go. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand to your feet. We will go again through verses 1 through 10, and I will pray this song. And the title here, it says, it says, Safety and Abiding in the Presence of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you once again. We thank you because you are the most high God. There is none above you and there is none that can do anything greater than you can do. And we thank you, Father, for you are our almighty God. That there is nothing that can stand against you. You have created all things and everything. Who is there that can take what you have made and work it against you? You, Father, you, God, are great and wonderful and greatly to be, to be praised. And we thank you for that you have spread your wings out and you have covered us that we will abide in your shadow, the shadow of the Almighty. What do we call you? Who, who are you? You are Lord. Not only are you, you Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. May our minds and heart be set upon that, that we can come to you in the time of trouble, we can come to you in the times of danger, and we can come to you when hurt, harm, or danger comes against us, that you will avenge us. Vengeance is yours. So we pray that you will avenge us. Why? Because we place our trust and confidence in you, 
and in you alone. Deliver us from those who work against us. Help us in times of peril when this world is, as this world is turned upside down and turned over and the thing, the disease of viruses and even the disease of selfishness is all around us. But we are thankful because you will cover us in your, under your wings. You watch over us with a watchful eye. You shield us from these things of this world and you are our sword, our great sword that strikes down any word, any principality or power that comes before us. Because of that, we will never be afraid of the terror by night or the arrows that fly by day, nor or the pestilence that walks in darkness because we know that with you, you are light and you shine the light in this darkness. The destruction will not lay waste to us. Those who fall come against us will fall at the side and they will fall at your right hand. It will not come to us. And we thank you for that. We praise you for that. We honor you for that. You are our refuge. You are our most high God. <coughs> In you we have a dwelling place. In you we have refuge. We know that no evil shall befall us. <coughs> and no plague will come in our dwelling because you heal us and you save us. <clears throat> Therefore, we thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It is offering time in song. Never.